What's going on guys? Today we're continuing Double Oaktober with one of my favorite Gundams from this series. We have Gundam Arios, the second generation of the Curios Gundam and of course the orange one that flies and transforms. Because that's what it do. <laughs> of course it's piloted by um, Alleluia Haptism in the second season of Double O. Um, it's definitely the upgraded version of Curios by a long shot. And on top of being the already upgraded version, this is the GNHWM version. So that's the GN Heavy Weapons Missile Pods. So this was the equipment they had going into the final battle in 00. So he's got a few extra goodies on him versus the regular Arios. Now, um, just showing here on the box art, you do see the GN Archer, or the Gun Archer, there in the background, and we will be reviewing that kit separately. Even though, technically speaking, it goes with Arios. And you'll see what I mean as we go through it. So, let's take a closer look at the box art. Of course, you get Arios right there using its awesome rifle blasting somebody in the distance. You can get some great GN missiles over here, which of course, the that would be the M. <laughs> so this guy actually had a ton of missile pods all over him. And then of course you get a few more missiles. I already pointed out the Gen Archer there. And then you get the Double O logo up top. Bandai logo down here. You got Bandai 2009 made in Japan. In the little Gundamo sticker there. And then all this good stuff here. Up, oh, And of course now Chika Morishita did the artwork. So let's come to the bottom. You get a good shot here of what makes it the uh, heavy weapons missile pack. So you get a few things here. I'm just pointing out a GN something. I have no idea. That's the... It looks to be the rifle. Yep, definitely the rifle. And then, of course, you have the missile pods on the sides and right there as well. Now, just looking at it... <laughs> okay, I did something totally different on mine. Just Just looking at the pictures on the box. I thought I got mine pretty good. Alright, so here you got a good shot of it here. You see it does things with its arms. The weight does stuff. The hands do things. It's got some arrows. There's some arrows with your hands. More change! So yes, it is transforming. We already know it does that. This is new. Hey, we like new. That's new! This is new! It's all new, guys. Oh, okay. Well, see, I don't have the original Arios. So I don't know what the... Or I can't really tell you what the major differences are. So the box will have to do that for me. I don't know exactly what it's pointing out right there, but oh well. Of course you get a good shot in transform mode up here, showing things can move. Doing the shoulder goes up, maneuver there again. Cool. Uh, that's weird, what is it showing? Where's that rifle? Okay, so this rifle, which is not this one. Now I'm confused. Beam sabers? Okay. Oh, you know what? I forgot. He does come with a separate rifle. I'm dumb, guys. Because I don't open boxes. <laughs> and I guess this is talking about the clear parts, obviously. And can be mounted on a base either this way or this way. Yay. That's awesome. Come to the side. And it's actually number 50 in the double uh, O line. <laughs> Alright. Come to the back. And, of course, you get... A nice front and rear shot of the Arios, and you get the description of it. It's 19.1 meters tall, so it's pretty tall, guys. Some of the other ones are like dead on 18 meters. 55.4 tons, that's pretty heavy. And a long list of GN weaponry there. Always love the Celestial Wing logo. And you get a read up here on the Gundam itself. Of course, take your time if you think you can read that. I can't. And then, uh, Come over here and you see Alleluia Haptism. Nice little updated read up for him there. I like this artwork here. It's just shooting everything. You can come over here. You get your plastics. Little guy in the toilet. Always like that. And the uh, obligatory warnings. Don't stick anything in this box in your three-year-old's face. It will hurt them. Uh, stuff I don't know what it says. And 1800 yen. That's a nice reasonable price for an upside down box. <laughs> All right, guys, let's go ahead and open this and see how cool it really is.
All right, guys. Now we have Arius out of his little glass cage of imprisonment <laughs> and looking truly like awesome and impending and like he transforms into a jet. <laughs> Much like Curios that came before it, he doesn't exactly disguise his uh, transformation that much when he's in robot mode. Sorry, I'm knocking stuff over here. So you get the clearly pointy ends coming off the shoulder there. And if you turn just a little bit this way, he's got the wings on his knees, very much like Curios did. But I do really enjoy this kit. This is just awesome. There's a lot of great detail in this, some good panel lines, and I'm not really partial to orange, but just they do it right with these kits. Like I just I've never been that big on orange things, but this looks really good. Just the use of the orange, the yellow, balancing out nicely with the grays and the whites. I really do like it. Now let's go ahead and talk details because there are plenty on this guy both in sticker and paint. I'm gonna point out one thing, just because it was a pain in the butt, no pun intended. This whole thing right in here is an add-on piece you have to plug in right back here for it to stand on a normal stand when in robot mode. I'd never used that before because he's always in transformed mode on display. So, this the first time I've ever had to use it and it was for this review. So, I'm going to go ahead and take his guns away. I don't know why that one... There it goes. I didn't want to come out of the fist. And that one just fell out. So, we got like a, a whole bunch of different things going on here, guys. Let's take a look at details here. He does have a nice uh, gem right there for the main camera. And I did have to paint that one just like I did previously. And, it, you know, just a little bit of red metallic marker takes care of that. You do have the nice uh, foil sticker eyes right in there. Uh, you come down, you do get a couple stickers right there because frankly, painting things yellow on top of white is not easy, especially to make it look right when it's done. Um, it does have a few stickers on this guy and it should have a lot more, but I didn't use them all. But the ones that matter the most are these huge, huge foil stickers for covering these wing tips and edges. And you can see right there, as I un unpeg that, it really does get messed up around the edges. It's just, it's not happy. Just totally not a happy deal. Um, I wish I had the ability to paint those and actually make it look good, but that's just not something I can do, sadly. Now, why is that one not wanting to go back where it's supposed to? Foot must have moved a little bit. That's supposed to tuck in a lot better than it is. That's weird. I don't know. So you can see here, this one's way back. That one is not. Uh, it has some funky parts in the uh, transforming that uh, probably are preventing that, if I had to guess. I don't know. Okay, anyways, we'll talk about transformation when we get there. But uh, some of it is a pain in the butt. Uh, there's a lot on this kit you do have to paint, especially with my favorite dark gray ever. The whole inside of the really hollowy foot here, that has to be painted. Same thing underneath down here. A little bit of gold, I'm sorry, green paint there with some gray to match it. you got to paint the GN Vernier right up inside there. The GN Drive, which is right in here, if you can even see it light-wise, right there, painted green. Otherwise, it would be nothing. Uh, they do give you a couple stickers for this, but I'd rather go ahead and paint it my favorite dark gray ever. And now you guys see now why it's my favorite dark gray ever. It's been used on everything. And then, of course, right here, these little vents or whatever they are also have to be painted to make it accurate. I see something's going on back here. That's that's not right. Ah! Oh, look, and Bart. Sorry, guys. All the joys of doing unscripted reviews. Let's see here. That's down. 
There's some something definitely in the way or something is not transformed properly. That just doesn't want to go. I ain't gonna force it. So, uh, where was I? Oh yes. Up here, all of this. I think it came with at least this part right here to put in as a sticker. I know it came up with some other gray parts, but I thought it looked better just to go ahead and paint it because it needs to be that dark color or else you just got way, way too much orange. Even all the way into the joints, you can see right there, that needed to be painted. So, yeah, a lot of paint detail has to happen on these guys. And there's a little bit more I will show off when we get into... Uh, plane mode or jet mode or flyer mode whatever you want to call it so let's set him down for a second and I just bumped the camera hold on let's see how well this guy will stand on his weird feet stay like the feet don't look the same either what is going on here something's not something is not peachy keen here guys okay well that was one problem okay so, I'm going to see if I can get him to stand. If he won't, I will put him on the stand. <sighs> Ball joints. They're nice. Alright, hold on. Okay, that was a pain in the butt. <laughs> it, it was just fighting me all along. Things falling off, things don't want to go right. Alright, let's go ahead and do articulation. I said weapons, I was joking. Let's do articulation real quick. He does have the standard double ball jointed neck. And he can turkey neck like the best of them. He can look up about that far. He can look down about that far, which is technically part of the transformation. Uh, he's definitely got more shoulder articulation than a lot of these Gundams because of the transformation. So he can reach way, way up. Gotta be real careful here. Turn this way. And he can reach up about yay far. If you move that out of the way. If I can, his head's in the way. There we go. If you move that out of the way, you can get the best high teacher ever. Hey! Hi! I'm curious. Arios, whatever. Arios is my big brother. Okay. So we get forearm rotation. It's a little stiff. Yep, you get the normal single ball joint that can go about yay far. That's pretty good. I'm trying not to mess up these shoulders. They, they're ball jointed here and then hinged here. And then I think the whole ball joint itself does move a little bit. He does get the nice double wrist. So this is where he makes up the extra elbow. So he can sort of get even further reach. So he has the ability to touch his own shoulder, but it's because of his forearm elbow. Not his elbow elbow. <laughs> okay, normal HG wrists. EA for HG wrists. Put that down. <sighs> Trying not to make things fall off of this guy. He's a little fiddly. Okay. Uh, he's got he's got a little bit of ab crunch like that. His double spiky uh, chest armor there makes it a little difficult. Okay, you do get some rotation. You can get about that far before you really run into things. That's good for that. Now, the legs. Well, those are a little weird. So let's see here. Okay, uh, these things are actually not like normal skirts. So they're actually individually ball, ball socketed. Uh, kind of like side skirts would be, but they're front skirts. <laughs> it's actually the same poly caps. Um, you can come up that far, and then you put his wing in his armpit. You can go back that far until you're running into things. Um, because of these boosters, you're really not going to get very much of a Jean-Claude. Plus, they're just ball joints. It's, it's almost back to the old style legs for this, because he has to transform. They don't want to get the legs all over the place. You do get double jointed knees. you got to work it a little bit. You can go about that far. You kind of run out of room at that point. Let me fix that. Okay. You get some ankle that's mounted up in here. Just a little bit of a swivel and a ball joint. All kinds of good stuff. And then, of course, a hinge for the toes, but that's mostly for transformation. And you can completely break his ankle all the way around. And these things, part of transformation, also move. The back skirt moves just a little. At least with the uh, butt peg there in place. This does move. That's mostly for transformation. 
And of course, these move so that you can give him devil horns if you really want to. So I've seen some people who like do this, just have him or tilt it up just a little bit and you get some Transformers Prime Unicron action. <laughs> All right, now we can talk some weapons. I'm going to let him stand right there. He's only got a few, but we can show him off. He's got this little rifle, kind of a twin, twin barrel gun. It's pretty neat, and for some apparent reason, it can fold back. No idea. I really, I, I don't understand why they did this. I think maybe if something else sandwiched in there, I would get it. I don't know. I mean, you saw even on the, uh, on the box art, it can do that. No idea why. And of course I did paint this. Some nice uh, metallic translucent green. Of course you can see there's a lot of metallic on that. Yay. And I did a couple spots of gray. Added there just for detail. Did not do the barrels. And a little tiny bit of panel lining. This gun honestly just stays in a box, that's why I forgot about it. <laughs> he doesn't hold on to it very well, and it doesn't stick with him in his transformation. So, I'm going to set that to the side. We're going to go on to the much bigger new gun. New gun! Really, really big GN rifle. I like this thing. It's really dark, it's hard for it to focus. So, I'm just going to drop it. I think, I could be wrong, these look like they're actually smaller blasters right there mounted to the side and it's very similar to virtues original uh gn bazooka because it's got the side handle really long big barrel and then of course you get some translucent greenness there that of course had to be painted it does have the handle that folds one of the ways hold on i don't remember which way it goes hold on okay folds out this way you're just looking at it, it's kind of hard to tell. Now this handle is not for holding. This is for when he's in transform mode and you plug it in there. You use this side as the handle for when he's holding it like a gun, as you saw. And of course it just slides right in to the hand, like so. Yay. And I guess you could technically dual wield it if you wanted to. Oh, I incidentally was showing off his other weapons. He does carry some beam sabers hidden in his crotch. And you do actually get the blades, since I actually know where they are. I'm just going to put this in here just for the fun of it and show a beam saber blade coming out of his crotch. So, like that. Of course, you would remove the beam saber before doing this, but, you know, why would I do that? There we go. Okay, I'm going to put this back on, and we're going to go ahead and do the transformation, which I'm going to struggle with, but I don't care. <laughs> All right, set the gun off to the side after it comes out of the hands. Oh, I did actually forget. He does come with a spare hand. I don't know why. He comes with a tiny fist of a hand. Don't know why he needs just a fist, but it is what it is. Okay, so let's tighten this up just a little bit. All right, so come down to the feet. You flip these down, you flip these down, you push this like that, that's where it snaps into place. Do the same thing on this side. Then the whole bottom of the leg will go up in there and snap into place. Sort of, you know, completely finishing off that wing. So you want to do the same thing to this side. Make sure you push until you hear the snap. That's how you know. And of course, this. Terrible, terrible foil sticker. Ugh. Okay, and then you rotate it that away and try to straighten out the legs like so. So, nice little angel kind of formation there. <clears throat> now you take the head, you tuck it like so. You come to the back, you pull these off because parts forming. Ah! That's not supposed to happen. Parts forming. That was weird. Okay. That actually looks like you can hold it. That's funny. Okay, I'm going to put that back together because that was an accident. I'm sorry. Okay. And we take these shoulders, crank them way up here, and you turn these guys this away. Use that tab to snap them together like so. 
you take the arms and you fold them flat against the body. Try to get the hands to tuck up in here. I don't know why it's fighting me so. I don't really want to turn. Alright, so I figured it out. No big deal. I thought they tucked in. The hands just do this for the most part. Just kind of up under the edge of the wings. No big deal. I thought it was a little more complicated than that. So, that's weird that it leaves all this exposed the way it does. Okay, and then you take this new part and you just flop it down like so. Then you take the butt flap and yeah it takes a little bit more parts forming I'm sorry I'm gonna go ahead and remove that make my life easy now these tabs go into those holes that are on the back of the shoulder and you sort of just put it back together like it was more or less like so and that will hold everything well at least on the top half together go ahead and push that fin all the way up now there you have him in his basic flight mode now trying to remember where did that thing go I'm missing some parts guys but that's okay we'll just show this off this way now you take the missile pods and they just slide right over the forearms like so and of course in robot mode you can do this too why didn't that one go up there it goes oh I totally when I shut off weapons missed this entirely Hold on, I forgot about the forearm cannons, but actually, this will help me show them off. So you pull that up, and as you do, you just slide that over there, and you can see the forearm cannons right up inside there. So, yay for forearm cannons. He does actually use those pretty uh, wildly near the end of the series. Sorry, I forgot those were there. I wish that would tab in. I wish this would just tuck in under the leg entirely. <laughs> Be a little bit smoother. That's okay. So, he does suffer from visible head syndrome. He's got this nice big gap here. That'd be great if the head could just disappear up in there. But, oh well. Now, there is an adapter somewhere in the universe. Probably. I'd probably throw it away. I can probably find it if I really try. That uh, you use to... It plugs in right here and allows him to go on a stand but because of the way he works with uh, the gun archer he uh, oops I'm just gonna bash everything today the way he works with the gun archer that doesn't become a problem anymore so and then you take the big gun and you just tuck it under there and now he is fully in his flight mode and this thing is cool I love how long and sleek and pointy it is. It's actually a bit way way longer than uh, its predecessor on the uh, Curios. So, but I'm gonna go ahead and show this off because it has this blaster I guess right here. Of course it has the gun it's carrying underneath but more importantly this is the missile pod. Why would they call it a missile pod if it didn't have any? So you pull this off and you slide it over one notch like so if it'll peg back in there like that and there's your missile pod isn't that awesome <laughs> now I wish this was just a sliding with a lock gimmick instead of having to pull that up and move it over you know it's kind of annoying that you got to do that but it is what it is guys and of course I painted all of those little tiny missiles gold and they go all the way around that's why it's impressive because this thing can fire missiles in every <laughs> direction using this now of course there was the uh, the Gapachon I think it was what it was called where he was flying along and of course he had the whole big attachments to the back that held tons and tons of missiles as well um, give me a second I'm gonna set this guy down like so now I believe this is actually the piece I was looking for guys so let me see if it will work Yep, okay, there it goes. 
Took me a second, guys. Sorry. Probably didn't even see what I was doing. All right, now I can put them on the stand. Sorry, that took a minute. <laughs> I knew I had that piece somewhere. And, of course, it was in the, the GN Archer box because that's where everything goes. All right, so that's him in his flight mode. We'll go ahead and do a quick comparison between him and his predecessor. So you've got the Arios and the Curios. Now the funny thing is this one, this one gets mounted flat. <laughs> this one more or less because at least the stand I've got, you know, it mounts that way. So they, they really didn't plan that out too well. So whenever he's in flight mode, you kind of have to deal with it like this. <laughs> so this is pretty cool but you can see the massive size difference here I mean lengthwise he's probably just a little bit longer but bulk wise there's way more I mean the legs are spread out here this guy's got way more in the middle where this guy had the little kind of claw gimmick here with the uh, the shoulder or I'm sorry the uh, shield this guy at least in the first series or the first part of the season he can fly and catch people if I can get the shoulders to cooperate there we go so he can fly up and grab you like a weird bug <laughs> all right and I'm not gonna bother transforming them into comparison in Gundam mode this is good enough guys so I hope you like this video and you like the rest of the, the uh, double October uh, playlist so there's only a couple more really left in this, so this is it probably for the second generation Gundam from Gundam 00, guys. Oh, and stick around for part two of this video, technically speaking, when we check out this girl. Oh yeah, you know what this is. Alright guys, so I will catch you on the next review, and remember to always keep on building.